Y'all know what it is. Morning after Oklahoma's bowl game, Alamo Bowl against Arizona. We fall 38 to 24. And the Sooners finish the season 10 and 3. I'm gonna be honest. This ain't gonna be what you think. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. You can figure out what side of the pendulum is gonna land once we get to that point. If you want to go ahead and dive right into the specific sides, y'all know I do a 22 piece nugget, offense, defense. If you want to go right into it, you can do that in the description. The timestamps are in there. That way you don't have to hear the full intro because I got a little rant I'm going to do before we get started. So for the uninitiated, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. After every game, we do a morning after video. We dive into 22 pieces, 11 on offense, 11 on defense, and figure out how we feeling about the team, right? And so... We're going to go ahead and jump into that, but initial rant, <clears throat> I want y'all to understand something. A lot of y'all going to jump in these comments. Um, I've been blessed with a good viewership, so there's going to be a lot of y'all in there. Don't argue with each other. It ain't worth it. I'm just going to tell you now, minds will not be changed, and I'm not here to try to change your mind either. I'm just going to tell you what I observed, what I feel like makes sense, what jumped out to me, but the overall premise is... Minds ain't going to get changed. So to prevent yourself from being upset and mad and fighting, don't do it. Don't engage. Uh, disengage. And you're going to see a lot of trolls in here, right? I've been having USC and Texas trolls jump heavily into the comments. Now I have friends on both those sides as well. And they're cool. But you're going to get a bunch of those, right? So brace yourself on that. And, you know, be excited the fact that you finished the season with 10 wins. Right. As a Sooner fan, you know, 10 is the standard and we got back to it. We've refreshed this roster over 90 percent. And now that we've done that, we're starting to see that, you know, we're, we're lined back up to the way we need to be. We've got a lot of young players, a lot of players that are part of the Brent Venables plan, along with the coaching staff. We're seeing a lot of changes. So. Had to preface you with that. Don't be in here arguing. Ain't no reason to. I'm on vacation, as you can see, but I will try to hop in some comments sometime late tonight whenever I'm back in my hotel room. But besides that, let's dive into this game, right? All right. We're going to go offense first. I think offense deserves to go first because we're talking about the new era of Sooner civilization. We've got the Jackson Arnold era that has begun, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackson Arnold is here and he showed you. Two things. First nugget on this, why I don't like playing freshmen early in the season and why I prefer freshmen playing late in the season, right? You don't play freshmen too early because once they still got to figure things out, the offense has to be limited because they're freshmen, they're true freshmen, still learning the game. And Jackson showed you everything from being a true freshman to a sophomore to a freshman again, all in the span of four quarters. And I'm going to be honest, he had a really good game for the circumstance, right? Like, I'm, we, we can be mad all we want, but this dude finished with 361 yards, two touchdowns on 46 for 45. 46 of 45 passing. 26 of 45, I'm sorry. And he looked poised. He looked good. He looked comfortable in the pocket at times. Uh, initially, on that first set of drives when he had his two interceptions, basically on like five passes, uh, it, you could tell that he was trying to force feed stoops. And that was where the mistakes came in. You, you could see that he was looking for his safety blanket. And that, I mean, he telegraphed that interception, the Stoops on the wheel route. Well, Stoops was wide open. Should have threw it earlier, but he didn't. But then he started to settle, which is what I appreciated. Seth Luttrell, to me, him and Joe John Finley called a really good game. They called a game that was built for this type of team, built for this quarterback, this young quarterback. And so Jackson Arnold went out there. He went through his progressions and he set up. So I wanted to open with him on the first two nuggets. Whenever he was comfortable, he was good. He looked like he was trying to figure things out and the game was not too fast for him for the most part. Like the game was fast for him, you could tell, but it wasn't too fast, which is a really big plus on his side. Three, you're not going to win a single game, single game with six turnovers. And those turnovers crippled us because they were, Two fumbles in the red zone and then three interceptions that, yeah, 
you got to stop looking down your receiver, right? And then you had the end of game fumble, which felt like it was just what was needed, what needed to happen. The game was over at that point, right? We were basically about to, it, it was done. You could tell that everybody was gassed, fighting, doing all this work just to come up short. And so I give a shout out to Arizona because their defense played hella good balls, especially in the fourth quarter. That's when they showed out the most, right? Oklahoma started the game off doing a really good job of causing problems for Arizona as we started getting through. Offensively, we started to move the ball. Like I said, the play calling was good. The run game was getting it. Number six, Gavin Salchuk walked up in there. Got him 134 yards and 15 carries. The outside run was doing good, especially for him. And so I know a lot of people were blaming the offensive line all over social media. You could see that. The offensive line was the scapegoat for this game. And I'm going to tell y'all, keeping it a buck, the offensive line was very serviceable throughout the entire game until the fourth quarter. At that point, you could tell they were gassed, and it was more so we're trying to – the pace and speed of the game, we were trying to hurry up and play comeback, and we shouldn't have been in that situation to begin with. If we weren't in that situation, that offensive line is just leaning on them, and we're just running it down their throat. We couldn't get to that point because we decided that in the third in the third quarter, we're going to fumble the ball again in the red zone. And my guy Farouk, he's still my dude. He struggled. This was a very bad game for him. Like he had some solid catches and then it was the, yeah, nope, two fumbles. Uh, four catches, 57 yards, and he decided to fumble the ball in the red zone twice. Now, remember, we ended up in this game, and this is why I'm taking my foot off of the offensive line, like not like y'all. I'm off the offensive line like that because of one reason. We had over 500 yards of offense through three quarters. You don't do that with a bad offensive line. Now, I didn't say they were great. I said they were serviceable, and they did everything they needed to do to help Jackson Arnold get successful. Now, granted, he started to feel some pressure as it was getting pushed back a little bit, and you can see the youth was starting to come out. That and in the old guard, uh, Rouse was struggling with those holding penalties. You can't have seven holding penalties throughout the entire game. Now, it wasn't just him, but we were getting penalized out the wazoo. Shout out to the SEC refs for uh, actually calling holding. Uh, kind of a breath of fresh air. While at the same time, it kicked us right in the in the, in the keister. <laughs> but we finished that game with eight penalties for 76 yards. And it was all because of you know, the pass interference and then mainly the rest of the while holding. And they were four holding, four penalties, 40 yards. And they were calling holding on them, which is good. We got that. We got to do better about not turning over the ball. Period. Six turnovers is what lost that game. That, that And you can't blame any coach for it. We lost because of six turnovers. That was just a young quarterback just not having the full pulls initially and then trying to force feed things that he shouldn't have force fed. I noticed that I think his three interceptions all came from passes to Drake Stoops. That should tell you something. Now, as Jackson Arnold got comfortable, he started, oh, he was launching that thing. That pass to Brendan Thompson for that touchdown was just number 10. That was a that was a chef's kiss. That pass was so beautiful. And we were 7 for 15 on third down. Not bad, just about 50%. Finished the game with 562 yards. Like, who's going to complain about that? Like, tell me your complaint about that type of setup, right? That's what you wanted. You needed that. And... Yeah, you 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 definitely got everything you wanted out of this game. So that is the offense and how I felt about it. Hop in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts. Y'all know I like to hear from you all. Uh, we'll, we'll dissect even deeper. But th those are my 12 points, really. You know, Jackson Arnold, the new era's here. And I'm going to be honest, I wasn't upset. I feel like it, it's going to lead to a very good direction. So... Let's talk defense. Now, the defensive side of the ball, now they held Arizona, who averages over 430 yards per game, to 383. And honestly, that 383 really came at the end of the game. Like, they had 280 yards going into the fourth quarter. 280. 
And what killed us was that fumble six, that 87 yarder, turn the game around. Let's look at this, right? And this is what kind of jumped out to me. I was looking at some of the play by play because I watched it, of course, live, went back to the play by play, did a little bit of a couple of key plays I want to look at. I want to look at some offensive line stuff and the defensive line push. We were getting pressure. Like they were pressuring the heck out of Fafita. Initially, Fafita got comfortable. He got his field goal and he got that touchdown at one play because of the interception. Um, but Honestly, that field goal, they had to work for that, which is good. Now, T. McMillan was eating us alive, 10 catches, 160. And there was just nothing you could do about that. It was one of those situations where you had a wide receiver that's probably going to be a first-round pick in the future, playing backyard ball with his boy. Couldn't do anything about that. And we just kept putting the defense in very uncomfortable situations. But when you put them in standard situations, we forced a punt. Um... We got an interception, right? Heck, even after we fumbled, after the interception, Farouk fumbled that ball, the defense still forced a punt. Like, it wasn't a short yardage situation. Anytime that it wasn't short yardage, this defense showed up, right? Like, I had some people in my mentions during the game upset about how the defense, how, how we were, you were playing. Like, the defense, you know, was getting cooked on the pass. Yeah? But guess what? They buckled down, and we forced one, two, three, four straight four and outs. Right? I'm sorry, five straight. My bad. And they scored off short yardage. The only time they didn't score off short yardage is when they took the lead. Because that's when we punted it. Then at that point, it was just done. But besides that, I mean, the first drive, they got a field goal. But they scored on that interception. They got a touchdown on that 35-yard touchdown because of the interception from Jackson on the first possession. But when we did not give them really full field, they didn't score a touchdown. All their touchdowns came from, like I said, except for that last one. We were, we did a good job defensively of holding them. Like I said, 280 yards of total offense in up to into the third quarter, which is something that we've done all year. First quarter, we struggle. Like, it's just they just come out slow. The problem of being young, having a lot of young players playing, and then we progressed and got better as the game went on. I don't know about y'all, but, hey, that's probably one of the more impressive things that I've seen out of this defense is that their ability to adjust, adapt, and make adjustments and actually it work. Like I said, we went out there – and forced five straight punts. You can't beat that. You got an interception, five straight punts. And the reason, and we were up 24 to 13 with like 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter, third quarter. 30 seconds left in the third. So if we don't give up that fumble that's returned for a touchdown and then throw an interception right afterwards, this game isn't different. So woulda, shoulda, coulda, of course, but to me, it's not the end of the world. This was a – our defense showed up, and I think that our defense is going to take another big leap next year because everybody coming back, right? I'm expecting Woody Washington to announce he's going to return. You're going to have Gentry, who's going to have shoulder surgery. He didn't play most of the game because of his shoulder. You saw Kanai playing, which Kanai got that interception. He wasn't perfect, but he got a pick. I mean, y'all mad about that, right? He jumped that route, got that pick. I'm satisfied with that. And the linebackers, Kip Lewis, was everywhere. Dog, Kip was back there getting them tackles for the loss. Like Kip said, I'm about to uh, inflate my numbers and remind y'all of who I is and why I should be playing more. Kip did. He had seven tackles in this game, a sack, and two tackles for the loss. This was a Brent Venables game. We had 11 tackles for the loss in this game and five sacks. We had five sacks. Five. How many of y'all excited about five sacks? I am. Because... They did not play max protect in this game. Since they didn't have max protect, we was out there pushing them. Cole was back there pushing them. He was pushing and pushing and pushing. You saw us and our defensive lineman in the backfield. You saw Dejon Terry back there. You saw Jacob uh, Lacey. You saw Marcus Stripling back there pushing. You saw them pushing and pushing and pushing. Our Mason Thomas getting that sack was huge huge for what we were trying to do right so overall defensively 
38 points is deceiving. That 17 points in the fourth quarter is what kicked our butt. But we were giving them hell through most of that game. It's all about closing at this point. And so that's what Venables is going to have to work with these young players is get them to close better. I, I'm not mad. If this was a full veteran defense, full, like like every position was juniors and seniors, then I'd be like, okay, I'm, I've got concerns. Nope. You got some young corners. You got a young lineman. I mean, your most veteran is really your, deep, your, your defensive tackles. And, you know, that's it. And linebackers, you saw a lot of Kip. You saw Kanick. Uh, I, I think you saw some Kobe. Kendall Doby. Shout out to him. That man was balling. Kendall Doby's my dude. I, I'm so glad we picked him up. Two sacks and two tackles for loss. Two sacks in this game. Kendall Doby was all over the place. So we balled out. It wasn't the way that we wanted to finish, of course. There's nothing perfect about this game, unfortunately. But I'll tell you this. I'm not upset about the way the team played. I'm not upset at how we finished. I would have liked a different storyline, but guess what? We'll be fine going forward. We showed that we have the capabilities of being good and being a top team. And yeah, we're going to keep riding it out. So that is my thoughts on this game. Hop in the comments on the defensive side. Let me know your thoughts. Love to hear from you all. And uh, the season's over. I won't be around until probably Monday to the first, to the, after the first of the year. I'm taking a break. Uh, like I said, I'm on vacation. About to go finish up my vacation and uh, enjoy myself. News come down the line. I'll play catch up you know, on the first when I get back, and we will dive into all of that. If you've made it this far, you like the content, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Love for you to join this family of college football fans. We talk a lot of OU football, but we're going to be expanding heavily into college football in general and having a blast do it. So that's it. We'll chop it up soon.